Aquaponics is a method of food production that combines growing plants in a soilless system, which is hydroponics, but we combine that with aquaculture, which is raising fish. So in an aquaponic system, we raise fish in a tank and we feed those fish a high quality diet. The fish waste then goes through a series of biological filtration processes. So the fish waste completely breaks down and releases the nutrients that we need for plants to grow. So the plant roots are dangling in that nutrient rich water. They take out what they need. And in that process, they help to purify the water for the fish. Wisconsin has some of the higher numbers as far as aquaponic farmers, schools doing aquaponics, and just general interest. I'm Rebecca Nelson, one of the co-founders of Nelson & Pate Incorporated. My name is Claire Thompson. I'm the executive director of The Farmery. It's an indoor urban farm located in downtown Green Bay. So my name is Mike Knight, and we're here at Clean Fresh Foods on a 120-acre organic farm. My name is Bonnie Goodenough and I'm with Floating Gardens Aquaponics. My name is Brandon Gossacker. I'm the president of Superior Fresh. I guess I'm a, a fish geek maybe or a biology geek. We were looking for some way to make the farm more sustainable and we had this spot. We were interested in this technology. We started out as a grain farmers, actually the, our farm has been in my husband's family for four generations. And with grain being so volatile, we were looking for something different. We think aquaponics is the, the wave of the future when it comes to food production. It's truly the most sustainable way to raise food, whether it's nutrient inputs or water use. We can build these facilities anywhere in the world. Our experience in aquaponics actually started in hydroponics, which is just soil as plant culture. You do it because you can grow a lot of food in a small space, but hydroponics relies on mined and manufactured fertilizers. So aquaponics is a much more natural way to do this, where you're combining fish in a soil as food production system to produce both fish and vegetables in one system. The water in an aquaponic system is the common denominator throughout. So you have water moving from the fish tanks, which is kind of the starting point of the system, and the fish waste needs to be broken down through biological processes. So the water runs from fish tanks, filter tanks, runs through these raft tanks, the plants take out what they need as far as water and nutrients, and then the water continues on back into the fish tanks. So a lot of the early aquaponics models um, in the research side going back 25 years or so, you could grow about one or two pounds of vegetables for every pound of fish. And we've gotten that up to 12 to 14 pounds of vegetables per pound of fish. We're gonna switch over from tilapia to bluegill. The driving force behind us changing from tilapia to bluegill, we were looking for a fish that commanded a, a little bit higher price at the market. We think uh, bluegill, especially in the state of Wisconsin, uh, given the cultural aspects, uh, is a, a better product. And also, uh, bluegills, the temperature requirement for uh, water is less than tilapia. We're also interested in how much nutrients, so how much waste do they provide uh, compared to the tilapia. So we need to figure that out to see if bluegill are as efficient and they can power as much uh, biomass as the tilapia currently do. We chose perch because there's a tremendous demand for perch and the ecology of the lake and wild caught perch in Lake Michigan and in the Bay of Green Bay has plummeted. Most of our fish is imported and uh, we'd like to be able to have more control over locally sourced perch. And we believe that if we can figure out how to hatch perch, grow them into fingerlings and get them out to prospective farmers that they will want to grow them and there will be a very high demand to buy them. And unfortunately, we have a relationship with the UW Green Bay where they got a grant and we were able to hire associate researcher Ken Webb. He's gonna be helping us set up our protocols for rearing and hatching out fellow perch in our facility here. Tilapia, as great as they are, have a very low value because tilapia can easily be reared in large extensive ponds in South America, Central America, or Asia, and then shipped over here frozen. But tilapia as a cultured species is really one of the best you can rear because they're tough, they're hardy, and they protect their young. 
perch are much more difficult than most any other fish that you're used to. We start fish here as an egg and it takes about two years to grow in Atlantic salmon to harvest size, which is about 10 pounds. Atlantic salmon have about a one to one feed conversion ratio versus other forms of protein. So we're, we're, we're super efficient. The fact that we produce food year round, we never stop, is a huge benefit. We also don't use much water. There's none used by weeds because we don't have any weeds. We have zero waste in our systems. We can grow a crop every four or five weeks of leafy green vegetables, microgreens in two to three weeks. The fish, 15, 20 months to grow out to market size. So we've switched gears. We've decided to see what's the least amount of fish that we can grow to provide enough nutrients for the leafy green biomass that we're growing and harvesting. The plants in our system are 38 days from seed to harvest. They're actually in the raft area for only 18 days. So we transplant a 20 day old seedling into the rafts. It takes 18 days before we harvest it on the other end. And we harvest every single day of the week in our, in our raft systems. So a typical tilapia will stock into this is 50 grams. So about a two and a half inch fish is what goes into the tank. And at about six months, it's ready to harvest at about a pound and three quarters to two pounds. We're producing about a thousand heads of lettuce per week and about 5,000 pounds of fish per year. And that's in about a 5,000 square foot footprint. And when we harvest our lettuce from this system, it's out to the customers within 24 hours. We eliminate so many of the problems with long distance transportation, both in cost and quality. We're producing thousands of pounds of organic lettuces, uh, 3,000 pounds of fish every week and uh, it's never frozen. So as soon as the fish leave here, they go to our processor only a couple hours down the road. They get processed there and take a couple hour ride to the grocery stores. We try to keep everything within 400 miles. That's what we consider local. When we first started out, our business plan only included selling our products to a middleman that was going to do all our distribution. That wasn't really going to be an option for us due to the price and due to the volume that they were willing to actually take. The infrastructure to support a business like ours is not quite there. So there's not a lot of fish processors out there, so we couldn't boil up all these fish and then on a monthly basis uh, ship them off to have them filleted. It just isn't there. But it's changing and it's growing. And so that's when we decided that we needed to go right to the people. And the customer actually led us to putting together our chop mixes which required us to get our processing license. Another big benefit of aquaponics is it's an all natural process. So this is huge. We don't use any pesticides, we don't use any herbicides, and we don't use any chemical fertilizers. And on the fish, we don't use antibiotics, we don't use growth hormones, all the inputs are very clean, and there's no contaminants. We have fish biology, plant pathology, and water chemistry. And so all those have to be in balance. If the fish have any issues, we can't really remediate the fish uh, with anything because the plants won't tolerate it. If the plants have any issues, we can't put pesticides or fertilizers on it because the fish won't tolerate it. So it forces you to keep a really uh, clean balance. We have to constantly be monitoring our nutrient levels to make sure that we don't have too many plants in the system or too few fish so that we have that good balance between nutrients for the plants and it all comes from the amount of fish and fish feed that we're feeding them. Being um, an organic facility, we control pests with other microscopic pests or we can use um, organic type products that will slow down or stop the growth of plant diseases. If we see an aphid, for example, we would actually buy a wasp, a beneficial, uh, beneficial insect that comes in and actually eats the aphids. From a, a biosecurity standpoint, it makes a, a, a lot more sense to bring in an egg, uh, bring in a fish as an egg. You can test the parents and make sure that they don't have any pathogens and uh, the eggs come in clean and we actually have the ability to clean the eggs. It's, it's much, much more difficult to clean, clean a fish when you're trying to, to get it to take feed and whatnot. By raising fish indoors and protected from the environment, we maintain biosecurity. So by raising them inside, 
we can keep a disease-free or a biosecure group of fish so that when people buy from us, they know that they're not introducing any new disease to their system. But the second thing about bringing them inside is that we are not at the mercy of mother nature. So last year in Wisconsin, we had a blizzard in April. Well, that's right when yellow perch are spawning. And so we had a large die off. If we spawn our fish in December, instead of the natural spawn in April, then that means farmers, when they wanna go out to their ponds, can actually stock fish that are four months ahead. What that means to them is, is they can have harvest sized fish in one year rather than in two years. We see an incredibly bright future because we do produce a protein crop and a vegetable crop all from one system in a very efficient and sustainable way. And I think over the next 20 years, um, you'll see aquaponic food production farms inside every community in our country and then around the world as well. We think aquaponics is going to be something really big and special here when it comes to food production. I think that this is a wonderful opportunity for uh, small family farms that are struggling to add a component to their farm uh, that produces revenue all year round. I feel that aquaponics is the, the wave of the future um, because we can grow so much more in a controlled environment with so much less water and not having to ship it 3,000 miles in order to enjoy fresh produce.